going to examine tonight is the best ways to optimize your performance on the set so that you can remain an integral part of the scene when it actually shows up on the screen. Um, we want to learn what you can control to make that happen, and we also, I think, want to uh, learn what you cannot control, what is beyond your control. I think it's all important to know. So, um, Jordan Goldman, whose book, as I said, and as he was a wonderful panelist for us uh, before, um, was an inspiration for this evening, actually, when I heard him on another panel of ours. He wrote a book called uh, How to Avoid the Cutting Room Floor, and in that book, he delineates the primary tasks of an actor, the basic goals which must be accomplished. Now, otherwise the actor becomes a problem. You have to edit around the, the actor, which they aren't happy about, neither are the actors, because they don't wind up on the screen. So, um, these are the basic tasks that he delineates that serve the story. Stand in the right places, say the right words, be directable, convince the audience that you are the person the story claims you to be, and experience the events and emotions that the story claims you are experiencing. So, beginning with that, to the first point um, of being in the right place physically, uh, Eric, start with you. Uh, <laughs> jump right in. Uh, how important is physical continuity, and how can that affect what performance you use when you're editing? Well, definitely, you, you want to be in the right place uh, <laughs> yeah. for multiple reasons. You know, uh, it's going to be jarring if, you know, you're cutting from one take to the other and you're in a completely different place. Like, when you see that, the audience kind of, you know, will notice and kind of take them out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, working around that can be tricky. Um, and, yeah, you, you want to make sure that the... Because, like, the camera is going to, you know, they're going to want to know where you're going to be so, like, they can point at you properly and, like, get a, <laughs> get a, good, get a good frame. Uh, so that all works together to, like, getting a good usable shot um, for that, that's usable just by itself, but that also is usable in conjunction with other takes. And uh, anybody else want to talk about physical yeah, continuity? I, well, I had a... I have a little anecdote about something that happened many years ago when I had just been bumped up to editor. And uh, it was on the show Cagney and Lacey, okay? So that we had this little kid, Troy Slayton, who used to like to hang out in the editing room and watch us cut. And uh, of course, he played Tyne Daly's son on the show. And uh, I was cutting some scene, and I was laboring with making some cut work. And I said, see, Troy, this is why you always have to do everything the same way because I'm having a very difficult time cutting from this angle to the other angle because the actor or actress is not matching themselves. So, and he's going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he's like nine years old, little kid, right? <laughs> so a couple of days ago, I, a couple of days afterwards, I get a call from the set. Have you been talking to Troy Slayton? <laughs> and I said, uh, <laughs> yeah, why? He hangs out in the editing room. They said, well, He's down here, and the director is the, the director's trying to get him to do something. He's saying he can't do it because he didn't do it that way in the other shot, and now the editor won't be able to cut to him. And you told him to do that. And, <laughs> and I so will you talk to him? And I said, yeah. I said, Troy, if the director tells you to do it a certain way, follow the director's instructions. <laughs> so yeah, matching is important, but if the director wants you to do it a certain way, trust that the director knows what they're doing. Yes. Um, exactly. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll do a master a few times, and the best actors figure out, before they start, pretty much um, what movements they're going to make. They're going to pick up this cup on this line. They're going to turn this way on this line. So that they know that by doing that, most of what they're doing will stay in the cut. Um, and then if, if we're doing a master and I realize, ooh, I need you to lean over at this point, and I didn't have you do that in the last two masters, I'll say to, I'll say to the actor, I know this is different from what you just did, but this is the master that we're going to use. And what I usually do is, if we've done a few masters, and there's one that I know I'm going to use and the movement's a little different, from what it's been in other takes, I'll say, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the second master. And that's the one where you leaned over 
Ellen on this line. And the good actors all go, yes, okay, I get it. And it helps me, it helps them, it helps them. Because once we get into the editing room, we're matching. And they'll, you know, I don't even have to tell the editor that. Because once they get start going through the footage, they'll see, oh, okay, they're matching this master. Um, I had an, a really great actor. I mean, he was a, a regular on Friday Night Lights. And he's probably the, the only series regular I've worked with who was different on every single take. And it was so difficult to, to cut around him because he was terrific. But then in another take, he'd be leaning forward. So he'd be like saying one line like this, and then one line like this, and then one line like this. But the, the, that was the performance I wanted. So we had to figure out how, how to do that. And I tried to help him. I tried to say, look, um, I'm going to use this master when you were leaning back. And then he'd forget and then lean forward. So, um, you know, it's hard. I, I get it. I'm an actor. It's hard when you're in the moment to remember, oh, yeah, Lily wanted me to stay back here because you're in character and you're in that, you know, that emotion. And I get it. And usually I'll give you another chance and I'll say, look, I know you were absorbed, which is great. And you did a great job. But I need you to be back here because this is the take I'm, I'm matching in the master. Yeah, if you're Robert De Niro or Jack Nicholson, don't worry about matching because nobody cares. <laughs> but uh, if you're just trying to become the next Robert De Niro or uh, Jack Nicholson, match. It, it'll be in your best interest. Well, talking about matching, props. I hate props. I'll tell you why. Smoking, right? So now you're in a scene where you're smoking, and then so you cut around, the cigarette's gone down. And then another take that you're really good in, cigarette's longer. Or a cup of, you know, clear liquid in a glass. And, you know, we've gone through visual effects and had to fill the glass to be the same as the rest of the master and the rest of the shot. And so, I think it was John Ford that says, you know, some actor asked him, so what's my motivation? He goes, say your line, don't bump into the furniture, and think about your paycheck. You know, I had a brilliant prop guy who, like, burned these cigarettes down to a certain point and then left the ash on there and then, like, made it go out so that the cigarette was always, like, at exactly the same place. And he had a bunch of them. It was, it was amazing. So I've used that trick since then. I, I would say, too, um, a lot of times the business during the scene can kind of develop as you go. Uh, I was shooting a scene that was very comedic. And there was some business that started happening. And it was even happening after the master. So that's the danger zone for a director to get into something like that that isn't happening in the master. But it was toward the end of the scene, and that's the point where you have to be really careful. And thankfully, my editor brain was there. It doesn't always save me. It saved me a lot, though. Um, and I was like, I really like what this kind of back and forth you're doing. They were like, he was picking something up. She was slapping his hands. He was picking something else up. She was slapping hands. It was really funny. And, um, but then when we turned around, they weren't doing it again. So I'm like, OK, <laughs> we have to remember. <laughs> We're doing this in the in the coverage, but not in the master. So there's, there, like you said, sometimes the director will be like, "No, this is. I'm definitely going to be using these takes. I'm definitely not going to be." And then, but also just to help your editor out is always great to let the script soup know. Definitely don't be. You know, this is where I want this scene to be, and you can still get, you know, in trouble for it because if the director, if the producers don't like it, then they don't have it. <laughs> yeah, don't mistake the idea of matching with being mechanical. I uh, look at a truly great performer. I remember way back on Cagney and Lacey, Tyne Daly could do take after take after take after take, and it was like a machine. She was exactly perfect, take after take, and yet it w the 15th take would be as fresh as the first take. So keep that in mind, that uh, matching is not necessarily being mechanical. <laughs>